now we're ready to look in more detail at emission processes. We'll continue with our explicit example of the emission of a photon as an electron transitions from one state to another. The first emission process we'll look at here is spontaneous emission. This is the most common emission process. It describes nearly all light emission. As we've said before, though it might seem it should be the simplest process, ironically, it actually requires this full quantization of the radiation field before we can properly explain it. However, we've now done all that work, so let's see how spontaneous emission comes about. So, we're going to start again thinking about our electron system that has got two possible states. State 1 with energy E1, state 2 with energy E2. And we suppose that the electron is initially now in state 2. So that's going to be our starting state of the system. And this is the upper state. And there are no photons in any mode. At least that's what we're going to presume here for the moment. So now we can write that initial state as just the creation operator for an electron in state 2, operating on our empty state as usual. So this corresponds to just an electron in state 2 and no photons in any modes. And this has a total energy that is just E2. So that's the starting energy of the system. Now, note that semi-classically, with no electromagnetic field applied, nothing will happen to this electron. There would be no transitions in our previous, simpler, classical electromagnetic models applied using perturbation theory. But now we're going to do this properly using a quantum mechanical version of our electromagnetic field, and we're going to see what happens. Well, we proceed just as we did in the absorption case. We're going to look at the right-hand two-thirds of the matrix element we're going to have to form here for Fermi's golden rule. This is our same perturbing Hamiltonian as we had before, our electric dipole Hamiltonian, with this part here from the electromagnetic field and these parts here corresponding to transitioning a fermion from state K to state J. And our starting state is, as we said, just an electron, a fermion, in state 2. And so we're going to encounter this string of operators when we put all of this together. So here's this set of operators here, and the operator from here plus the empty state gives us this set of operators here. And we can move that around a little bit. Again, just moving the fermion operator, commuting it with all of the boson operators, we can move it into here. Now, we can use, as before, the anti-commutation relation for the fermion operator pair, these two here, to move the annihilation operator in. So that gives us delta 2 and k. That is, this would be 1 if single particle fermion state k is also 2. And we obtain an annihilation creation operator pair here. Well, when either of these two annihilation operators operates on the empty state, we get nothing. So this term disappears and this term disappears. So all we're left with is everything we see here. We have this minus sign, the A lambda dagger operator, which is a creation operator for a photon in mode lambda, and a fermion operator corresponding to putting one fermion, an electron, in state J. And we have our delta 2k here from here. So with this string of operators written out now in our simplified form from this two-thirds of the matrix element, then to get a non-zero result for the complete matrix element, we must therefore choose that the state Q that we're looking at on the left-hand side here, which will be the final state of the system that we're interested in, has to be this state. Otherwise, this matrix element is going to be zero because the left-hand side would be orthogonal to what we got from the right-hand two-thirds. So it's the same arguments as we've made before. And this is a state with 
the electron, now in some particular final state J, we don't yet know which one, it could be state 1 or state 2, and a photon in mode lambda. And this state will have energy corresponding to the electron energy in whichever state J we end up with here, plus the photon energy for a photon in some mode lambda. Well, we put this state Q, which is some specific choice of mode lambda we're thinking about for the moment, and an electron state J, we've still got to figure out what that is, whether it's going to be 2 or 1, into our general perturbation theory expression. So here we have the same expression we've worked with before. So now our starting state, state M, corresponded to having an electron in state 2 and nothing else. So that's minus I EM here. We've still got that down here. But now, because we chose the starting state to correspond to the electron just in state 2 and nothing else, that's this energy here. And then the energy of our state that we have realized we must go into is the energy of the electron in that particular state. We have not yet figured out whether this is 1 or 2 and the energy of the photon that we seem to be going to have to have. And simplifying that down now, using all of this here, this just evaluates to 1. And the Kronecker delta here simplifies this summation. So k has to be 2. Then we have our expression we could now integrate up to get our transition rate. So, performing that integration in time and using the same kinds of manipulations as we used before in the absorption case, we're going to evaluate this and then we're going to deduce a transition rate. Then we get a Fermi's Golden Rule transition rate just like this. As before, for any finite photon energy we're going to get out here, the only possible choice we can make for J is 1. If we chose J equal to 2, this would evaluate to 0, and since the photon energy is presumably finite, there would be no situation in which the delta function was ever anything other than 0. So we're forced to make the choice that J, the final state of the electron, is going to be 1, if we're to have any transition rate here. And we also are going to require that E2 minus E1 is going to be h bar omega lambda. So therefore we have this formula here where we now know for sure that the only situation that is going to give a non-zero result is if we choose the final state of the electron to be state 1. This transition process is spontaneous emission. The electron starts in its higher state 2 with no photons present and it ends in its lower state, 1, with one photon present. This photon can be in any mode lambda with the correct photon energy to match the energy separation here, and for which this number is not zero for some other reason. It could be zero because this integral might evaluate to zero for specific functions and specific polarizations or directions of photons. Note that this process has emerged naturally. It's a consequence of quantizing the electromagnetic field. Remember that if we did not quantize the electromagnetic field, then with no applied field in the problem, the electron would just have stayed in state 2 forever. That's not what happens, and this has required essentially no additional physics except the quantization of the radiation field.